Hi, and welcome back. We're going to begin this discussion on the nature of justice. Now, last week, we opened up with an explanation of this category of commandments called Mishpatim. Well, once again, thank you for taking the time. And uh, we're diving back into Rav Shamshin Rafal Hirsch's work that is Chorev, his reasons for the commandments. And now we're delving into Mishpatim. Now, Mishpatim goes under the title of Tzedek, which is justice. But we do have a concept that revolves around the idea of Tzedek, which is more relatable. What I'm talking about is Sedaka. But what is the differentiation between justice and Sedaka? Now, often we have this, it's like an interesting paradigm shift that people have to take when they appreciate that charity in the classical Western sense of the word, of me giving on to the other because of the benevolence of my soul, isn't really a Jewish thing. What I mean by that, sedaka, which we translate loosely as charity, isn't this benevolent um, pedestal that I stand on while I give to the peasants below me. Sedaka is the acceptance of duty and responsibility, but clearly at the same time coupled together with the love you have for the other. And this is the what I want to discuss in this mitzvah. In this mitzvah, under the title of just simply justice, I think it really frames the entirety of what's to come next, as in respect for other people's bodies, respect for their money, respect for their time. These are things that will fall under the category of mishpatim, but orientating us to the concept, which is one of the mitzvahs from Rav Hirsch's standpoint, Avram is commanded. Now, this is one of those things that's quite important to focus on. Avram, Avram Avinu, the forefather of the Jewish people, is commanded to guard the way of God and practice tzedek and mishpat, translated, once again, as justice and righteousness. So, the way Rav Hirsch develops it is that at the core, as we mentioned last week, the core motivation for reality from Rav Hirsch's more metaphysical standpoint, is love and justice. But everything emerges from a most basic principle, which is justice. So how does this work? And I think what we're going to have to do at the beginning of this conversation is really talk about the interplay between these two concepts. Because justice is what I owe to the other, but then what is love? Love isn't completely disconnected, just to perhaps express it in our own experience. There is a reason I should give to my children before I give to someone else's children. You can think of the, eh, the the lack of love and the lack of justice, a person who takes care of everyone else but doesn't take care of his family. Now, a person could say, well, perhaps it's more loving if I take care of someone who I have no connection to. But we don't look at it like that. We don't look at the person who takes care of people in Africa but leaves his family to starve as being a moral exemplar. A person who starts with his family even though he clearly has a responsibility to his family, we look at that as a deeper and more real expression of love. So even our own experience couples together love and justice. They're not disconnected completely. So by way of opening to this mitzvah of justice, Rav Hirsch gives us a bit of a framework. He says justice is, and this is perhaps looking at it from a more philosophical standpoint, but it builds the foundation for how we look at the notion of justice. Rav Hirsch sees the concept of tzedek applying to your action, to what the unity of God is as applied to your mind. Now, to break that down, justice is how you are to act, but the basis of how you act is based off how you think reality is composed. If you look at reality as being this uh, collection of multiple forces, blind events, well then, how you should act isn't so clear. But if you look at reality or the world that you are in as comprising of creations of a single entity, thereby there is a brotherhood amongst everything. Everything has a context, everything has a reason to be, and more importantly for our conversation, everything has something that is due to it. Why? Because you're assuming or looking at the world through the lens that there is one God. And it's always, once again, we point out that when we say one God, we don't mean one powerful deity. We mean what the Jewish people have meant by God. In which case you have the universe or existence in an orderly fashion, being put into being by a cause that gave, and this is also key, God gave to that which didn't deserve. We call that an expression of love. So once again, if we develop this 
theology, if you will, even though I don't think Rav Hirsch would like that term. God created the world. God created existence. Now, Rav Hirsch looks at that very impetus to create, to create what we mean by reality, that is an expression of justice to himself. Now, really focusing in on what Rav Hirsch means there is, if I might say, Hashem's nature of what we mean by God is on some level to give. So to create the possibility of giving is an expression of justice. But to give to the other that doesn't deserve, that has no calling on you, that is love. Now, if we take this sort of framework or this metaphysical groundwork as a basis, we then as human beings look at the world. We look at the world as it being that expression of God's love, in which case when we peruse nature, when we peruse the natural world, the cosmos, we see an order to it. And we see an ecosystem of giving, and we are asked to follow that, to follow that justice that we see in nature, but not through compulsion like the rest of nature, but through the act of will. That's what we call the Bechir Chofshes, the ability to act in freedom apart from our natural environment. So what are we saying again? We're saying that the nature of justice of a human being is to live out what he sees in the world. And yes, Rav Hirsch is, at this most basic level, calling on a natural morality, but a natural morality grounded in the fact that you look at nature as being this orchestra of creation, that you are to take example of and experience that internal pull of your conscience, but recognize it as it being a reflection of something more fundamental. It's not a secular ethic, it's a... You could call it a, po a, a pre-revelation ethic. I know how I should act in the world in the sense that I try live out justice to the best of my ability. Now, here's the jump. Mishpotim, a justice, is justice in reference to other human beings. Because that is latent within my very being. I purely have to know myself to know how I should treat another. Now, I don't know precisely how to treat him, but you've got a fairly decent idea about how to treat another. Because, as Rav Hirsch breaks it down into three ideas, I have my life experience to work with. I have self-reflection. I need to know myself to know how to treat another. You get the idea of the um, golden rule, or Hillel's um, dictum of what is hateful to you, do not do to others, or Rabbi Akiva's. The idea that I just need to know myself to know how I should be treating another is both an interpersonal as well as a relationship to God part of my life. They're not separable. I know that's not a word, but you follow my meaning. Those are intimately connected. So when I act towards another, I'm also in relationship with God. But the reason why Mishpotim are so different is because Mishpotim, I just need to know myself. Now, there's going to be aspects of it that I don't know, but at the most basic level, Mishpotim I know because I know myself. So to build this up in relationship to love and justice, the way I do justice to another is also an expression of love, because I am giving to them when they have no demand on me, but I'm giving to them because it's an expression of my responsibility when it's not being demanded. That is sadaka. So just to draw it into a very basic, I give poor man money, it's that I look at the world as being an arena for my action in my relationship to Hashem. I look at what I have as being tools in which to live that relationship out. I see the other. He has no demand on me. He doesn't demand from me, but I have a responsibility. And then I give of myself to him. That's an expression of love through the foundation of justice. So love is always going to permeate every aspect of our religious life, but it's going to be on a foundation of justice. So, the way Rav Hirsch develops this out is that, yes, mishpatim are justice towards the other, but chukim, and very relevant to this week's parasha, chukim are justice towards, if I knew the very essences of the rest of the natural world, it would make as much sense to me. It would call me on that inner conscious level in the same way when I see another, but I don't have access to the essences of everything else in reality things that are subordinate to me, as Rav Hirsch puts it, the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom is subordinate to me. I, it doesn't have that same demand. It doesn't have that same impetus of justice to it. My mind, my soul, the natural world, all these things that are out of the purview of the human experience, that are chuk, those are what we call chukim, statutes. Not that they're irrational. 
Rav Hirsch will give reasons for every one of them. But they stem from a different perspective. Yes, there is an unknownness about them, but that unknownness isn't because it's a mysterium tremenda. No, because its unknowability is because of lack of information or lack of perspective that, by definition, we couldn't have. And as we discussed, Tyrus, which is my justice in terms of how I perceive the world, Eidos, in how I realize those ideas in ritual, Mitzvahs, justice towards Hashem, in terms of how I relate to Hashem, Avoida, the training towards these principles. So, the first mitzvah in Mishpatim is just a focus on justice. What do we mean by justice? What do we mean by tzedakah? Tzedakah is that combination that is lived out in the natural world between people. Tzedek is the purest sense justice. But we don't live tzedek, we live out tzedakah. So, this has been an overview of the notion of tzedek, and Rav Hirsch draws it in to the impetus of what it means to be a Jew. We were called by Avram to be a blessing to the world. And as Hashem, that imperative Hashem gave to Avram of guard the way of God and practice justice and righteousness and through us the rest of the world will be blessed. That concept is the calling to the Jewish people to live out a life of justice and example and thereby you have that whole idea of a light to the nations that we look at the world through the lens of justice and righteousness and we try and live that out in our lives. Thank you all so much for listening. Next week, we're going to move to more down-to-earth, the specific expressions of this Mishpatim. Like always, if you know anybody who would be interested in this podcast, please, of course, send it on. If you could like it, if you sub- could subscribe, rate, I would, of course, as always, genuinely really appreciate it. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful upcoming Shabbos.